sisters tonight um we are going to be sharing together um the lord put a song on my heart so i'm just going to sing it in obedience to the lord it's a part of a song <laughs> king of kings lord of lords you are the greatest in the world from the north to the south you are the lord there's no doubt from the east to the west oh my lord you are the best I will lift up your name higher. O King of kings, Lord of lords, you are the greatest in the world. From the north to the south, you are Lord, there's no doubt. From the east to the west, O my Lord, you are the best. I will lift up your name higher. I will lift up your name higher. I will lift up your name higher. Great Jehovah, you are wonderful. I will lift up your name higher. Father, thank you. Thank you so much. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. And at the end of it all, may your name alone be lifted high. In Jesus' name, amen. So sisters, today we are going to be sharing on, in my school on, on uh, healing, healing for our marriages. And uh, we've, we've been, the Lord has used our sisters to share a lot of things with us um, on marriage school. And today the Lord has put it on our hearts to, to share healing stories to encourage each other, um, healing testimonies. Um, yes, testimonies is, is a better way to describe it instead of stories. So healing testimonies to encourage each other on this platform. This dropped in our hearts, you know, um, sisters who the Lord is always bringing together to stir the affairs of all the schools. This dropped in our hearts at my school when um, Pastor Adline talked about healing yesterday you know, at the healing school and, and the things that we do that will bring um, healing to our bodies. I mean, we even prevent the sicknesses from coming, you know, and bring healing to our bodies. And so the Lord wants us to continue about healing. At this time, he wants us to share healing testimonies in our marriages. What is this that we have done in our marriages that has brought healing 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 to our marriages there are things that we do that, that it just brings strife but tonight the lord said we should focus on healing what the lord has done that has put healing to your marriage and it can be any aspect of your marriage i mean healing to your marriage doesn't have to be somebody who has had an affair alone or you know it doesn't have to be any of those ones at all and if it is, that is also fine. Anything at all. Look, it could be even how you speak to your husband, how you lay out his food. Whatever it is the Lord has done to bring healing to your marriage, my dear sister, he's encouraging you and I to share tonight. So I, I will start off the discussion or the sharing. And I trust that as the Lord lays it on your heart, please share. Some of our sharings go a long way to make a difference in, in the hearts or lives of another sister. I remember... I think two parenting schools ago, there was the opportunity to share on what we speak. And one of the sisters shared deeply on, on what, well, she shared what she thought was casual on what had worked for her child. And another sister testified that that was exactly what she needed to hear. And indeed, afterwards, a lot of sisters testified. So you never know what you think may be, oh, just sharing something casual will be life changing for a sister. So please, let's share. And um, for me, I I remember, this is very recent, eh? dear sisters, there was something that I was praying about, you know, um, sisters, please give, give me a, a bit to ask someone to shut the door. Yes, sorry, dear sisters. So I was busily praying about something, you know, I had gone on and on about it, back and forth, you know, 
blasting away in tongues, pacing up and down. And in my mind, God was silent. And the situation wasn't changing. And I was wondering, what am I not getting? What am I not understanding? Because, you know, if the situation is not changing, sometimes, yes, it won't change. But you now, you know why it's like that. At this time, the thing wasn't changing. And I also wasn't getting any understanding. I wasn't getting any scripture. And I didn't feel led to talk to anybody too. And so I decided to get up at dawn to pray about it. So maybe in my, in my human mind, maybe that day we had the end wasn't enough. So I used my own human thinking to wake up at dawn to pray about that particular subject, not just to pray generally. So one of the days, I think it was uh, last week, last week Thursday, yeah. I woke up at 3 a.m. I went to my living room. Oh, as soon as I got to the sisters, I heard the Holy Spirit say, say, go back to bed. Go back to bed, say. You know, and I knew, you know, it was a, a calm, gentle, go back to bed. And I said, but I came here to pray. He said, go back to bed. The thing you are praying about, the solution is not what you are coming to do right now. What I need you to do is to go back into your bed and touch your husband more often. Hey, sisters. This was me standing there. And as we say in Chi, me name it all. The sisters, I put my Bible down. That day, hey, I was wild. I had my Bible and my tambourine thing. Let me near break. So I put my Bible and my tambourine down and went into my bed. The Holy Spirit said, touch your husband more often. And I said, oh, but I touch him. He said, more often, starting now. Hey. So I was in the bed. And then I, I, I stretched my hand small, small. And then as I submitted and I touched him, all the tension and all the, you know, tightness and everything, just seemed to disappear. And actually it did disappear. And the Holy Spirit said, do this more often. And he, he reminded me of even something with my children where he had also instructed me to touch them more often, to hug them more often. And he, he reminded me of how things had changed when I had done that. So it got me reading about oxytocin and endomorphin and all of that. You know, it reminded me that even in science, touching more often releases some of these things that foster a closer relationship. So this thing that I had been praying about that I wanted to see, the solution was in an ac action, the healing for that particular thing, for that particular time in my marriage was in me touching, was in me touching more often, was in touching more often. That wasn't the, the, the solution or the healing prescription I was expecting. But that is what the Lord gave me. And at that time, that really solved the problem. And that made me think about something. This is what I'm sharing. Please be preparing to share it also. It made me think about something that I had read um, for one of my Bible toolkit classes here at CWW, where... And this is last, I think a week before or a couple of days before this incident, that you know, Satan exploits the work, the works of the flesh. Honestly, that sentence is like he opened the door of power for me. And so when this incident happened, and the Holy Spirit said the, the prescription for this one, the healing for this is touching more of him. And I sat down to reflect on how the whole thing had played out beautifully. I was reminded of this statement that the works of the flesh is what Satan exploits. So that when we are led by the flesh, instead of being led by the spirit, it's like an open invitation to Satan. I actually shared with one of our sisters and she was like, yes, this is when I also realized that, I just realized how much power that we have. So that when the word of the Lord says we should live by the spirit, I believe it's Galatians 5, 16 to 18, keep in step with the spirit. So I read from the ESV. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. 
For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. You know, and what this statement taught me, you know, of course, um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, what I was reading was also scriptural. What it taught me is that, you know, anything that I do by the flesh, in this particular case, the whole, I didn't want to do this and I felt he should do this first, you know, and it's not like I don't know. The Lord has used the beauty to teach me. Ah. And yet, in this particular situation, I was dragging my feet. And that was work of the flesh. And the enemy had exploited it and used it to cause unnecessary tension. So I just want to give you an example of how the enemy exploits the works of the flesh. Anything that you, we are doing because of this flesh, he would, he would exploit it. Because when we walk by the Spirit, he can't touch it. Hmm. He said, can't touch this moment if we walk by the, walk by the Spirit. But as long as we, we move slightly away by, by, from walking by the Spirit and we're walking by the flesh, ah, that is his territory. So he can play us from top to bottom. And that is what was happening in this particular situation. That as soon as I was, you know, wallowing in the flesh and thinking of how oh, I this and that and that and that, the door was open. And until the Lord had mercy on me, and he enabled me to listen to his prompt, his simple instruction of touch him more often. Because my first reaction was, oh, I touch him. And he said, I said more often. And so he was merciful to me and I heard that instruction says, my dear sisters, I was wallowing in my flesh completely. And I was dancing with the enemy. And this prompt, this gentle prompt by grace is what brought me back, you know, to where he wanted me to be. So the healing in this particular situation for me came through the mercies of God, helping me not to walk by my flesh or not to be led by my flesh, but to be led by our spirit. And I believe the Lord is bringing this up because he wants us to know that it doesn't matter how far we think we have gone. Because somebody will say, hey, after hearing everything from CWW, leading sessions, doing all this, how could you fall for this one too? But I did because I was walking in my, my flesh. So on my own, there's nothing I can do. It is only the mercies of God, the grace of God. And walking as led by him is what saves us from falling into these little, little traps that the enemy sets for us. You know, and so it is, as for our righteousness, as for our spirit salvation, once we, we are, you know, that one is done. But it's the little, little things, the little, our commitment to walking by the Spirit is what will save us on some of these things. So this is my most recent healing story or testimony in my marriage that I wanted to use to start tonight's sharing. So sweet sisters, who would share after me? What has the Lord helped you to do to heal anything in your marriage? Please share and encourage us. It may not be the same as what is happening in my marriage, but hearing the testimonies alone is encouraging. It makes us realize that, look, we are not alone. We have different struggles, but healing is available. So please encourage us with what the Lord has helped you to do to bring healing to any situation at all in your own marriage. The floor is open, sisters. The floor is opened. Please don't let me feel alone. No. It's feeling very lonely right now. Hey, the Lord hasn't healed our marriages at all. I'm sure he has, so please share. Please share. How has the Lord healed your marriage of anything at all? How has the Lord brought healing to your marriage in any aspect of your marriage? 
I shared earlier about how the Lord healed tension between my husband and I um, a couple of days ago, well, on last Thursday, simply because I was walking by the flesh and focusing only on how I felt and what should be instead of being led by the Spirit of God. And the Lord brought healing to my marriage by telling me or giving me one simple instruction, touch him more often. I was busily praying and blowing in tongues and the Holy Spirit asked me to go to bed and to touch him more often, starting now, as in starting at the time. And that just, it was a simple instruction that just turned everything around to where the Lord wants it to be. So I'm asking us to share how the Lord has brought healing to your marriage through simple everyday things. Any, any kind of healing that the Lord has brought to your marriage, please share with us. And encourage us. Even if the healing hasn't happened yet, have you learned anything that you believe can bring healing to your marriage when need be? Sis, please, I hope now it's a bit clear. Thank you. Hey, I'm sure God is looking at us and thinking, hey, my daughters, after all that you've been doing, you will share. Sister, are you going to share with us? Yes, Sister from Foma, I'm going to share with you. Bless you, bless my, you, bless you. My my <laughs> daughter just came and was like, mommy, mommy, you've got something to share, share. Uh -huh. God bless your daughter for me. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. my sisters. Evening. So I'm very new to CWW, but my big sister Yvonne is has been here for a while, and every Wednesday she will post things about the marriage school, and I'll call her and I'll say to her, hmm, "You wait. When you get married, you can apply all those principles yourself. You don't know how mm -hmm. it is." And I used to laugh at her, and then my younger sister too. Who introduced my big sister to is there? So she came to visit me. We live in the UK. Mm -hmm. So I joined one of the evening sessions. And I was like, wow, these people, are they serious at all? <laughs> anyway, so I said, okay, me to let me attempt and see what is going to happen. This is August. So it's not, I've, I've only been here maybe three months. But to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. I am like, oh my God, where have I been all these years? Mm -hmm. And I remember listening to Aunt Hefe and she said, you've tried this for 17 years. It hasn't worked. A line, a line. And it, it doesn't even take long. Like there's so much calmness in my house. It, like I, I just, I, I don't know how to explain it. And I'm not very good with testimonies. I have so many things that I can share. My sister has always said, either write it, you will encourage people. And my husband has gone from when I'm praying, it's like you are making noise to like, I even sent a message to Auntie Adeline. I said, well, Auntie Adeline, is there a men's CWW? Because my husband is eavesdropping on this platform. <laughs> so Pastor Adeline sent me a message and said, oh, there's a men's one, but it's not as hot as the women's one. So I said, it's okay, you send me the link because this guy is just on my neck. And I said, this is a women's only platform. She looked, he looked at me and said, Hey, Amma, what's the sound? How and you I was like, ha, You haven't seen anything yet because me, I don't think I'm fully aligned. You wait until I'm fully, fully aligned, then you will see a new me. So I just want to say thank you to all the leaders and everybody who joins this platform and how you are open and you make it so easy to the point that sometimes it's not even believable. And then mm -hmm. when you try it, it's like, wow. This is not that difficult. So, like, where have these people been? Why haven't they? I said to my sister, I can't believe we went into marriage without knowing some of these things. But it's never too late. Yes. I've, I've never been at ease in my relationship. I have no anxiety. I can speak to my father when I want. I don't even talk too much. I just say to daddy, daddy, you know, sort this out for me. And before I know it, I'm like, ah. How easy is this? And why have we been struggling with all of these fasting and prayers and talking and talking and advising and all these things? So I just, 
want to say thank you. There's so many things. I can't even, I don't even think I have the time or the platform to share the details, but I have been so blessed by the group, the war room, that, oh, it's just an amazing place to be. So I just want to say thank you to CCW leaders and everybody who is on this platform. It's just the right thing. And I, I don't know. I am wow. I'm, I'm, I'm bought and sold and... Now I've been texting people to join and, you know, sending messages and posting on platforms. And when I post the first bit of stuff, I say, if you don't understand, you wait and go and ask Pastor Adlan or ask God yourself. That's for mm -hmm. me. I've just been what I'm told and it's working. So thank you. Hallelujah. Sister Ida, all praise and thanks to God. And God bless you for sharing. And I'm grateful for your daughter for prompting you to share this beautiful testimony would have been hiding in your heart. <laughs> and I encourage you to please continue to share because it's a blessing to hear what the Lord is doing. Hey, this one is come and see you. Come and see. It is come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord, the has, Lord has, done. has done. Oh, sis, God bless you. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you for you. inviting people also to join our family. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Dahlia, mm -hmm. please go ahead. Amen. God bless you, sister. For host us, God bless you. God bless you, sisters. Um, good afternoon or good evening in your time. Actually, thank you for this opportunity to share. Before you ask the question, and after, um, and actually before even I enter, I was seeing my my husband. He's in program and in, in the TV, and I just seen him, and I remember something about our marriage. And when I opened the when I opened the program after when the program for my husband done and you ask this question, I say, wow, what is the Lord? You need to say something because he had remind me. Like when I see my husband now, I see him very comfortable in the spirit. Because lo long time ago, years ago, I see like I seen him, he's gone to program and do this program like you know the, the 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 Christian program and I just like you know we had a lot of going on first of all it's jealousy and jealousy was bring us to darkest point that is even let my husband I was very jealous my husband is famous in our culture in our country and I just very jealous on him and he was even not just take it just jealousy but he just coming like um a god for me like what he's doing uh, like just keep going keep looking after him i was i was this is my business things even i just didn't care about our son very well just care about this and about my honor it was it was very hard it was very hard even i i was i was i want to explain it i was in captive do you know the captivity i was in the prison that you know spiritual prison that's devil created for me and i sitting in it it's just like jealousy um, thinking about he's, he's my God, he's my happiness, he's my joyful. If it's anything like even I was praying in that time and doesn't happen anything like nothing like Lord, do something, help me do something. It just in that time I was very far. And when God, when God guides me to this school, actually it wasn't we didn't have the school marriage yet, but we have every Sunday, Pastor Adeline or Sister Efe or any blessing sister from the leaders, 
Sister Purpoma or all like any sister God God guided. So like every Sunday that I guide to hear, guide to hear and pray that is, you know, the spirit help me. And God start to work. It's like how Sister Pompoma say it, it's healing your marriage. It doesn't say like, she didn't say that today, like solve the marriage or, or another word is just like healing. I was need healing. My marriage was need healing because we were suffering. We almost coming to the point of um, uh, divorce, you know, like thinking of this word, um, speaking about this word. I start to prepare myself to be by myself, just like how I will be myself because everything I need it, it doesn't work it. It doesn't work it. And when I start to speak, to hear this teach of God by the Spirit of God, because the Spirit of God is healing your soul. It's, a sp it's healing you from inside out. I start to, 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 to manifest that is, eh, there is healing come to me. There is the Spirit of God guide me to be doing the, the right thing. I started, you know, to to be more on this um, in this platform. So that is the healing start when I hear, you, you know, it's it says the belief is starting when you hear the word of God. So the word of God, I didn't read it in that time, but I hear it in this platform. So when I start to hear it in this platform, it's a start to bring the healing to my ears and I start to to hear things correctly more and it's bring healing to my soul to my spirit and it start like to show me the reality of Christianity that is I'd never seen before and the spirit of God start to taught me teach me start to show me where is the truth start you know to freed me you know when is chains it's it's chains because i realized that is the marriage it is uh, it is ministry for god the marriage is ministry i thought it's for me it is um um it's 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 for me not for god like it's something for um uh, to pleasure me, to pleasure me, to pleasure Dahlia, not pleasure God. But you start to show me that is less of you, more of me in my marriage. Like less of Dahlia, more of Jesus in the marriage. That is start to free me from the chains. You know, chain. There's a chain in like in my in my heart, like chain in my hands, chain in my feeling, chains. So when I start to hear the word of God in this platform and I start to uh, to let my spirit hear, you know, it wasn't easy. In the beginning, I I hear a little, but I do more in the in the physical. But, you know, the spirit of God is is stronger. It's stronger than anything. So it's a start to come to my bones is to start to come to 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 me inside inside and start to take you know the trash from me and break the chains and start to free my mind because you know the enemy work on the mind but in 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 roman 12 2 it's to speak about the mind so we need to sacrifice our mind so to the lord so i start to be reading the bible i start to meditate in that word that is i hear from pastor adeline or sister f or any sister that's bring the word it's to start to open my mind to the spirit so i start to see the light that is my marriage it's for you lord so day by day god start to free me from jealousy from me 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 from um, 
what I need, not what God needs. All of this start to freedom me, start to heal me, start to heal me from lies that the enemy lie on me through the journey, journey, journey of the marriage. And I believe it in that time to destroy my marriage. But because God, his grace is sufficient. He is the grace is, 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 is just like, you know, walk before me for this marriage, for this, um, uh, uh, child, for the child that we have, for the marriage that we have. So that is what it saves me. It's, 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 I start to, to see that is my husband start to be uh, happy in the marriage when he's seen that is, I don't look like the enemy for him before. I start to look like a friend for him, one with him. I start, Jesus start to teach me that is, I need to submit under this husband. I just like to start to show me that says, Lord, but he is, I start to say this. He is not walking for your way, not walking by what you want to. He said, just submit. You start. And I started. And he start to see me submit to him. So my husband start to be changing. God start to be change him. As God changed me, as I submit, he start to change. So I just like, I love the fruit. I start to love the fruit of the spirit. And he start to love it. And we start to see the work of God. And he start to work on us on different area. And God keep changing me. And as he changed me in area in the marriage, that is, he is a provide me fruit. So, if I don't, if there is an area God highlighted to me or to you, sister, and you didn't work on this area, you will not see fruits on this area. But if God highlighted to you from this platform and you accept to change on this area, even if it's hurt you in that time, even if it's take you time, it's take me time, sisters. Even it's take me nights prayers and fasting and crying to the Lord and waiting to the Lord. It's period of wait. It's take me that's this times. And maybe a little of the time I give up, but that is the spirit of God help me to come again, stand again. I didn't die in that hard time, but I built in it. God, God helped me to build in that time. And he is helping me to, 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 to hiking on the mountain, how we call it, in the spirit. And he starts, not just that, he, he he healed my marriage. He's, he healing my marriage and he keep healing my marriage because he want to use me for another sister's life. If you are not selfish in Jesus name, you will allow God to change your marriage, to change you in your marriage, to use you to other sister because the point is not you. The point is not me. The point is the spirit of God need to change other people through us. As, as our marriage be changed, not just to live a good life for us, ourselves, but to let others be helped by our um, marriage change. I went through challenges and I asked God, I say, God, you can take me through without going through these challenges. Why, Lord? And I was crying. I go through crying through hard uh, time. And God showed me in that time 
that I need to go through this challenge because I want me, God, to give in your way sisters that they are going through this. If you, Dalia, are not going through this challenge, how you will help? this sisters and I just bow down and say wow okay Lord just help me help me go through it help me because I need help and I just going through it and complete going and I say Lord I'll obey you help me and today I pray every sister today even me that is God will strengthen us for the next um, step for the next period of the life that he will help us going through what we will go through it to help ourselves now by the help of the spirit actually not the help just of yourself so you will help others too in the same period that you are going through it now maybe today it will be valid for you but he is with you but tomorrow will be valid to another sister. And she wants you to encourage her and help her in this point. May the Lord help us to not be selfish. And we need just what we need today. I just need today healing marriage. I just need my marriage to be good today without doing anything, without doing any effort. No, it will be not happen. It's need to be having effort, spiritual effort, not just for yourself to help even other sisters in the points that you need help with. Hallelujah. That's what I pray for. Healing, healing for all marriages in this place from all what you need to be healed from. So, and you will not forget what God wants to do in your life and in another sister's life. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank amen. you, sister. Amen. Oh, Sister Dahlia, thank you. Thank you for blessing us this way. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, my dear sister. Sisters, I believe that as I have been blessed, you have been blessed too. That is just what it is. You know, she said a few things that I think that are good for us to continue to ponder over. But the Spirit of, the, of God began to teach her. And the Spirit of God is there for all of us and in us. So he will teach all of us if we ask him to. And that marriage is a ministry for God. It is. It is indeed. And the Word of God begins to open her spirit up. And so we must stay in the word. And as we stay in the word, we must pray as well so that our spirits will be opened up to the truths of God. You know, and when the Holy Spirit highlights things for us, we first need to accept it and then listen to him and change will come. You know, and I'm, at the point she was speaking, she said something about how sometimes we, we ask, oh, so, you know, why am I supposed to be doing this and all of that? And, and that reminded me of, of a hymn, which I posted um, there. It says, um, this is how it goes, but the lyrics are there. Who is on the Lord's side? Who will serve the King? Who will be his helpers at the lives to bring? Who will leave the world side? Who will face the foe? Who is on the Lord's side? Who for him will go? By thy grand redemption, by thy grace divine, we are on the Lord's side. Savior, we are thine. What is this hymn writer saying? And what is he teaching us as he writes this? Sisters, he's asking that when you become a believer, then what's next? Just like our sister was sharing in her testimony. It's not because we want to be happy alone. 
we want our marriages to be nice. And then what? It is supposed to be, depict the relationship between Christ and the church. And so once we become believers, then we are on the Lord's side. We are his helpers, other lives to bring. And which other life to bring than your other life? Your other life is your husband. He's your spouse. You are one with him. So he's like your other side. You know, he's not somebody's son who you went to marry your sisters. As we are asking the Lord tonight to highlight for us healing for our marriages, healing testimonies to encourage us that healing for our marriages is what he wants. We must remember that when we have challenges with our husbands, he is not that man. He's you, the others are bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, the two of you. You are one in the eyes of the Lord. And so what other life to bring to him than, than to bring to the Lord than your husband? Who will leave the world side? The popular, the popular uh, opinions, oh, leave him, oh, leave him, oh, ha, mm, ah, leave him. Who will face the foe? The enemy who is working fervently to break up families. Who for the Lord will go? Who is on the Lord's side? Would you allow him to use you to win this battle? Because this battle for the Lord, you are definitely winning. So the highness goes to rise by thy grace redemption. As we've been redeemed and also by the grace of God, we are on the Lord's side. We are his. So we work for him with him and in him. That is our calling us. That is how we can bring healing into our marriages. You know, when Sister Dalia was sharing as well, another thing that popped up for me is that, you know, when we bring our husbands to the Lord in prayer, again, we are not bringing them like that man. We are bringing them to, in prayer as if we ourselves are coming, are bringing ourselves to prayer because really we are one. So the, um, the uh, energy, the audacity, the, the, the eagerness, with which you bring yourself to the Lord in prayer. The genuineness with which you bring yourself to the Lord in prayer is the same one that me and you or you and I must bring our husbands to the Lord in prayer. If we truly want our marriages to be healed, if, if we truly, truly want our marriages to be healed, sisters, we are still sharing and as we are sharing we are also in between doing as the Lord leads us. Remember Revelation 12, 11 talks about how we overcome by the blood and the word of our testimony. So please share. Please share and let us encourage each other. Healing in our marriages. If you also are being led to share something that you know now that you didn't know before, that is also fair. Maybe the healing isn't complete yet, but you know something now. So you are doing something different. You know, our sister Ida shared earlier that the little that she believes she's heard, as she applies it in full trust of the Lord, she's beginning to see changes. And then we heard Mr. Dalia, who too said she had been applying everything the Lord had been teaching her, and she has seen the changes. So it doesn't matter which side you are on, whether you are beginning to apply or you've applied for a long time, please. Share with us and encourage us, my dear sister. Share with us. Oh, there's a question. Um, as a sister asks, what do you do if your husband has backslided and in, in, and and prayers are noise in his ears and he has stopped church? I believe quite a bit of what Sister Dalia shared has taken care of it. Um, but let me also chip this in that my dear sister, and please, any other sister who has um, experience or testimony in this area, please share. Our sister is asking that if your husband has backslided and, you know, prayers are now noise to his ears and his top church, what do you do? That's the question we are answering for our sister. My dear sister, you, you pray. Why do you pray? Because as I was sharing earlier, when, when let's assume, let's paint this picture that one side of a person's body has a stroke. And one side is working. When you are going to the doctor, you don't leave the working side at home and take only the stroke part. You don't split split the person into two and take only the malfunctioning part to the hospital. You walk together with the functioning part to the hospital and you go and you administer, you, 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 you talk about your ailments and the, the doctor administers medication to the body. 
So in the same way, my dear sister, if your husband has backslided, it is your other side that has backslided. So you come to the Lord in prayer fervently as if you yourself have backslided. As we say in Fiji, that I am shishir, that's that eagerness, that, that you know, um, that, that motherly feeling that you have when your child falls, you know, that, that boom in your heart. That is the same way that you come to the Lord in prayer concerning our husbands. That is the same way we come to him in prayer because remember, the left side has a stroke. You are the other side. You can't leave the other side at home. You are both going to the doctor and you are going with alacrity and you are going in earnest and you are going and you are collecting your healing by force. That is how we will bring our backslided husband in prayer to the Lord. And the Lord will indeed hear the, the prayer, the fervent prayer of the righteous one. It will avail much, but it must be a fervent prayer. As for your righteousness and my righteousness, it's one of the cross. No shaking. It's done. I can't even know. That is where you and I have to do what we have to do. So the Lord has been gracious and given you and I righteousness free. Now we are going to bring our backslided husband in fervent prayer as if it was us. And we'll bring him to the Lord. And we pray consistently. And the Lord will hear you. I don't say it on my own authority. But I say it because I know who I know. And God doesn't change. He will answer your prayer. So dear sister, this is what I have to share from my own experience and the experience of other sisters. And I know you will come and testify. Sisters, please, if you have anything to encourage our sister who is talking about her backslided husband, please share with her. Maybe you have an experience of what I'm sharing. You have prayed and you have seen the difference or you are beginning to see the difference. Sis, Please go ahead, Sadalia. Yes, please. As uh, yes. Sister as you talk, please, um, regard uh, our sister husband. God, show me something and I want to share yes. with you. Yes. Before, before I come in a believer, me, uh, there's somebody, somebody prayed for me because I was just like fake believer. I was just like, didn't go really to the church, didn't pray. And I need everything like that. God, sorry, that husband will do it very perfectly to me. And I wasn't very well with the Lord. And in that time, there's people, even I don't know, I don't know, they minister and they pray for me, for myself. And I get changed and I come now and I pray now and I pray in the spirit now and I read the Bible now and I, you know, supporting my husband in a prayer now. That's what I need to say. What God did with me, now I am doing it with my husband. Praying for him. Praying for every single point in his life. Keep loving him. Keep seeing him holy because that is holy as, as he's, he's, he's married me. He's with me. One, as the Bible said. So as people pray for you to be here, in this place, in this platform, in this prayerful platform, that when you will pray in faith, God will bring your husband the same point and more even. So as God remind people in you and pray for you and bring you here, as he did with me, do the same to your husband. You own, you own the same, you own the same to your husband. And you will see more than you see in yourself. Amen. Thank you, sister. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, sister Dahlia. Thank you so much for adding that. May the Lord bless you. Mama Augusta. Yes, sister Afripama. God bless you all. Yes, sisters. Mama Augusta. Please go ahead. Good evening. And Concerning Amen. place, what Amen. the sister Amen. have asked. We have been learning on this platform concerning submissive, how we should submit to our husbands. And as she said, the prayer will become a noise unto the husband. That means anytime she's praying, the husband, maybe he will tell her to keep quiet. So she must agree on that, keep quiet. When she is not around, he gets her place and go and pray. As how said, said, you continue praying for him. Continue to play your part as a wife in their home. 
submit to him because he will not allow a lot of things. He will stop it. It happened to one of my sisters. He will not allow you to do anything at all. So, but you continue to submit to him as a wife. Anything he wants you to, when you want to go to church, maybe you are going to church, say, come and cook for me. You must go and cook. And he will do everything. The devil will be using him just to disturb you. But please, my dear sister, you just continue to humble yourself to him and continue praying for him, fasting and praying for him. When you are cooking, they, they taught us on this platform some time ago that even when you are cooking, you are speaking in tongues. Before, when he's eating, then the Holy Spirit will continue to be touching him. Before I realize he will change. Sister, uh, Mama Favor gave a testimony how the husband disturbed him, disturbed her a lot. But later on, the husband now united with her and allow her to go to church and all those things. So you, it's a backslider. So continue to be praying for him. He will come back. People have been praying for us also. We also backslide before, but people pray for us and we came back to the faith. So continue praying for him. He will come back. When you see your submissive, the way you are doing, you will come back and serve the law. So don't be arrogant against it. You continue to show, play your part as a wife in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Augusta. God bless you so much. And I'm glad that, you know, sisters are sharing so that we know that this actually is working in homes. This is not something that we just say, but the word of God is active and living. It's sharper than a double-edged sword. It pierces through bone and marrow. So when the word of God prescribes something for us, our creator is the one who brought us here. And he shows us the do's and don'ts and the things to avoid and all of that in the same way. So when we go by the way, it works. Some more guests, Sister Dalia, thank you so much. Another sister has posted something I shared as, as well. Let me read it out. And uh, my dear sister who asked the question, I trust that you are being blessed. This is what the sister said. Um... Oh, sorry, the bit about two kids. <laughs> what I know is that when we bring our husbands to the Lord in prayer, we should leave them there with the Lord and resist the urge to become their, their maker. That is what she said. And she's saying this from her own experience. Yes. When we bring our husbands to just like what Morgesta is saying, just like with Adalia, we should just leave them at the throne of grace and really resist the urge, you know, to, to become their Holy Spirit. The, as for that one, that age is there. And that age doesn't leave you because you are praying often. But as you pray often and you spend more time in the word, you know how to overcome the age. You know, and that is what our sisters are, are saying. You overcome it by you can walk away from that kind of confrontation. You can be quiet when you, you know you need to and all of that. Maybe before you will quickly jump and say something. But as the Lord grows all of us, we realize that we are enabled. We are enabled to be quiet when we have to and speak when we have to. And like I was sharing earlier before the sister's testimonies, when we live by the flesh, eh? ah, it's an open invitation. Oh. So this is an example where, oh, Sister Justina is here and we have Sister Eni. Oh, God bless you, sister. Sister Justina, please go first. And then Sister Eni will go after you. God bless you, sisters. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Fion. Um, Sister, Sister Fion Palmer, God richly bless you for blessing us tonight. And God bless all my other sisters for sharing. So maybe first I will just start with a question um, about how the Lord healed my marriage and is still healing my marriage. And it 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 all began with, you know, the Lord helping me understand that his son is good. Um, I mean, after marriage with, you know, all the challenges, like Sister Ida said, a lot of things that we, we never knew uh, before jumping into marriage, but the Lord is faithful. Um, at a point, I kind of felt like, you know, you married to your own enemy. And, and there were times I used to ask myself, how come I didn't see all these things about my husband? And I'm now getting to see them now. There were times I used to feel that, you know, you are married to your own enemy. And then I, I asked myself, so how do two people love each other? Then all of a sudden they become enemies, 
you know. And as I went through all these stages and processes, they go, my, our father started to reveal to me that, you know, the issue is not so much about my husband. The issue is so much about myself, my heart, my posture, my brokenness. You know, it's everything about me. It is not about him. And the Lord started to help me understand that with his help, if I avail and align, he has a way of working on his own son. Because it, it, be very, it became very clear to me that when I met my husband and we were dating, he, he, he was like a very nice guy, you know. And so what went wrong? How did he all of a sudden change? And one day the Lord said to me that you changed him. It was like it hit me. It hit me, bam with that statement that I changed my husband. Like you made him what you are seeing him to be. And it, it was so revealing when I heard that I changed my own husband and now turned back again and accusing him to be whoever I think he is. And so the Lord brought me to a point where I even needed to start confessing positively about my husband not to see him to be, you know, that guy who is not like this, who is not like that, who is not like this, to see him to be God's loving son. And I started to see my husband as being good. And, you know, every time I got the opportunity to share, I would say that his sons are good. Our husbands are good. He, he started to teach me to use positive words about my husband. And, you know, things like when we were being taught to take communion, I remember when I came and I wanted to force it down my husband's throat, like we have to take communion every day. My husband said no. That was a, that was a whole issue. I couldn't understand why a child of God would not understand why we, we can't take communion every day, you know. But as the Lord worked on me, he, 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 he was working on my husband too. And maybe perhaps like the, my, my God told me, it was not so much about my husband. It was so much about me. And so as he worked on me, it, 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 I saw the translation in my husband. I saw it in our home. I saw it in our marriage. And so to my sister's question, I would just like to encourage you that maybe you should change your confession about your husband to start seeing him as, you know, a man of God but not someone who has backslided. Because sometimes the enemy has a way of using our words to put our husbands in places that are not very good. So if you can, I'm not saying things are going to change overnight, but as you continue to pray for him and con continue to confess positive things over his life, I'm sure the Lord himself is going to work on you and also work on him and everything will be okay. Thank you, God richly bless you. God bless you, Sister Justina. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Yes, Sister NA, please go ahead, my dear sis. Thank you, Sister Informa. It's Nana Rockley. <laughs> Oh, Sister Naraba, and I was wondering who is Sister Amy? <laughs> Please go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, to the sister who said the husband uh, tells her prayer is noisy. And this is what I saw growing up when my parents had this issue of almost breaking up. Um, my mom used to pray a lot. She was a Catholic, a charismatic Catholic, if I had to say. That's what I, I saw. And it got to a point, my dad didn't want to hear her pray. But she did not stop praying. But what, she, what, what I saw her do, she moved to another room and just be praying in tongues. Prayer doesn't only mean just saying it out loud for everybody to know. See that chapter. we can still pray in tongues silently moving our, our lips and uh, our hearts as focused on God. So our sister can try that. Don't pray loud for him to know you are praying, but at any point in time you can be praying to your own hearing. 
just opening your mouth, the Holy Spirit aligns your Holy Spirit, and your prayers will still go to God. So never stop praying because you never know uh, uh, what is this person. My parents' story for myself, I saw how one day my dad just came from town and told my mom that um, she should find him a Bible. He's going to church. My mom was a Catholic by then, but he said um, he was his father was a um a Methodist, so he's going for him from his dad. And that was the turning point for my dad to see. And he has spearheaded a lot of uh, church planting uh, in and around his city. So my dear sister, please don't stop praying for him. If him seeing you praying irritates him, try another method. I still keep on praying. Thank you. Thank you, Sister God bless you, Sister Naraba. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. You know, and as Sister Naraba shared, I mean, this this method of God has been working from long. You know, it's about her parents. It's been working from long and it's still working and will continue to work. Tried and tested. The word of God, ancient words. So please, let's, let's do that, my dear sister. And I know you will come and testify. I am waiting patiently for your testimony, because our God, he does not lie. Thank you so much, sisters, for sharing. Please, we are still sharing, oh dear sisters. We are still sharing. We are still sharing. We are still sharing. We are still sharing. Are still sharing. Sister, sister, iPhone 8. Yes, please, go ahead. Hey. Hello, sisters. Sister Good Ivy. evening. Sister yes. Ivy. Yes. Right Good here. evening. Can you hear Good me? Good evening. Yes, sis. Good evening. Thank you. Yes, please. Okay. okay. Sister Ivy, please hold a second. Sister iPhone, you share up with Sister Ivy, okay? Oh. All right. Sister Ivy, please go ahead. Okay. Okay. For me, I would say the Lord has been doing marvelously per the teachings that we've been receiving on this platform. Honestly, for me, when it comes to my marriage, um, for the helper bits, maybe I took it to the next level. Because on the onset, I knew I was a helper. But what I was doing was I was doing it wrongly. Honestly, I thought I was rather doing my husband a favor. Because, yes, the Bible said it. When you find a wife, you found a good thing. <laughs> so I was like um, the <laughs> self-righteous type. Let me put it that way. So, yes, I'm there to help mm -hmm. you. But the Lord started teaching me that, no, the help that he wants, he wants me to give to him is not what I am doing. If I really have to submit and align, then there, I realized that there was a lot of things that I was doing wrong. Because I hated it when anything, just everything I do, he has to commend me. <laughs> when it comes to correction, then I get angry. <laughs> and when I get angry, for me, for me, I don't, mine will not be like talking back at you. No, 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 no. I'll be harboring it in my heart. <laughs> I'll be harboring it in my heart. So I remember mm -hmm. after I joined and I started reading the Ephesians, Submissive, First Peter. <laughs> then one day he was well, something flimsy. He said, I did something. He, he said, No, you were not supposed to do it that way. And I got so angry. So the Holy Spirit just said, Hey, Ivy, why are you why are you angry? <laughs> So I was like, he said, you are being corrected. So why are you angry? And it really hit me because then I was hmm. praying for rest, like rest in God. Then he said that if you don't hmm. heed to correction, how can you rest in me? So it brought a lot of things back. And I said, hmm. okay, Father, hmm. I will be obedient to your word. 
and sisters to the glory of God gradually. It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's a long walk, yes. It's a journey. But gradually, even the way that my husband used to speak to me has changed. Now he's extremely gentle when it comes to speaking to me. That sometimes mm. I even marvel and wonder <laughs> whether it yeah. is me that he's speaking to. So yes, it works. Mm. It takes time. We need to work on ourselves. And I think that was what I was missing until I joined the CWW platform. The working on myself. Because yes, I was seeing every other person's fault, but not mine. But when I realized mm. that the work is on me, as Sister Dahlia had shared, then I realized that, yes, when I align and do what the Father wants me to do, because he says it, that if you love me, you obey my commandments. So if I claim I love him and I don't obey his commandments, then there's a big question mark. So when I started to align, when I started to be submissive in, in, in my heart, to be submissive to my husband, yes, I've seen a lot of changes, a lot of positive changes. And to the glory of God, I know we will definitely get there in Jesus' name. So this is what I wanted to share. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This time, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God is so good, my dear sisters. Thank you so much for sharing. This is the iPhone is. Do you want to share? Oh, she went away. What she said. This is the iPhone eight. Yes, sis. Please go ahead. Yes, please, we can't hear you. Since iPhone 8, please, are you sharing? No, I think so. She unmuted, so I'm sure she wants to share. Sis, please, can you hear me? Okay. Sis, I want a, if you're not sharing, then I'm going to mute you, please. All right. Okay. Dear sisters, we are still sharing. We are still sharing. Oh, somebody's hand is up. Sister Margaret, please go ahead. I thank you, Sister Common. God bless you. Um, God. The lesson I want to share is with regards to um, how my Christian work generally has changed since I started applying all the teachings on this platform with my husband. So um, sometimes I ask myself, so how was I really a Christian or what was my life as a Christian like? Um, it's very interesting. I would, I would like to ask someone someday what they thought of me because at that time I thought I was I was prayerful, I was all of that, but then I wasn't aligning. I wasn't in alignment with um, the things that I was supposed to be doing with my life. And then um, at a point after I joined and I came to understand some of those things, I realized that I'm doing this in, the, in a bit of a manip manipulative way. So, oh, okay, I need to align. If I want this, I know that when I, I behave this way and I'll get it. And that was how it was. But then one of the sessions I joined and then um, afterwards I realized that, you know, it's not even about him. So what happens when Christ comes tomorrow? It is, it is it's about salvation, about my life. So if I feel my life on earth is right and when tomorrow, when God comes tomorrow, I'll make it to heaven. Okay, that's it then. So I realized that, yes, it's about submission to husband. It's about um, having a godly marriage and everything. But above all, it's about 
me and my salvation and my walk with God as a Christian. I remember one of the two kids when we were discussing about when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. And then one of the sisters um gave an example about how um um everything comes under new management. So you cannot say, oh, let me keep this my, um, I don't like this. Let me keep this my my attitude. Let me keep this. You know, sometimes we, 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 we put things in compartments. So you are hot this morning, you are cold this afternoon, you see. But you go somewhere, people know you to be, with you come here, people know you to be, like it's just a mismatch. But when you're in Christ, you're a new creature. So everything comes under the management, the management of God every aspect of your life, not some, not just your marriage, you come home and you're this amazing wife and you go to work and people see you like yeah, kakai. everybody's scared of you because you have you are really like a nasty piece of work and everything. Like it has to transcend every part of your life. Because apart from me being submissive, it's about your life, it's about your salvation. So me being submissive to my husband is like it's about my work with God. So really not about him. So if something and then he doesn't agree with me or he says no, okay, that's fine. I, I give it up to God. And now I'm very quick to run to God and when complain to him and say, oh, speak to your son. I beg you, this one, I can't do it. Like, I'm very quick to do that. I don't even bother about arguing and, you know, and it makes it makes things easier. If you see it to be like the ultimate aim of your life is salvation. It makes the, the whole submission thing. It, it, it just is your, your relationship with others. Your Christian work becomes very different. You be, realize they are more graceful. You are more, you are more um um calm. That's the most important thing. You are really calm and at peace with everything because you know you don't think things lightly. If you are being very graceful, if someone does something to you, and you know you are forgiving, that like, it just makes life very easy. So this platform has really helped me that it's not just my home, outside my home and. I feel um, it's a long journey, like a sister said, it's a very long journey. And that is why I realized also that joining the platform all the time, praying, tuning in, listening to the word, because sometimes we fall, in the day you fall like a couple of times, but you join a three o'clock session, you join a 6 p.m. session, and by the time you go and sleep, you, you feel able to shake off all the, the load or the burdens you've carried. You know, so it's like every day I renew your mind, every day, like there's something going on every day. When you tune in, you are, you are blessed every day. And I feel like it's the life wire that you, you get to connect to all the time to recharge when you feel drained because, yes, you feel drained. So sometimes you, there are some challenging times that even though you feel that, oh, I'm very submissive, I'm this, I'm that. Because you, you, are, you are the candidate that the, the, the enemy is actually looking for. Those who are being submissive to their husbands, those who are actually saving their marriages, you are the candidate that the, the, the enemy will come to. So having this platform that runs like 24 hours a day, that like it, it never shuts down like you can always tap in and get you, you recharge your batteries and then you go back and you're you fine because you can't do it on your own you sometimes you feel like oh okay i'm there now i'm a submissive wife and that is when you realize that now nah, you're going to fall so i'm really really grateful for this platform that it's, it's encouraging it's not just encouraging like it's it's constantly encouraging because it's always open you can always join for something every three hours or so like it's there to help you, to encourage you. And yeah, so I'm very grateful to the leadership for what they are doing. And I pray that God will con continue to help us to, to together to uh, make sure this this platform continues running. Yeah, to save lives. Thank you. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sis Margaret. God bless you. God bless you. And we are grateful to God for all the healing the different kinds of healing that he's administering in our homes. We are grateful, Holy Spirit. Indeed, you know, the Lord says that when we are heavy, heavy laden, when we we are, we should do all, all who labor, you know, and are heavy laden, he said he will give us rest. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. That's why you hear sisters saying it so, initially it sounds like, hey, what are they talking about? But once you actually start it, Realize that his burden is easy and his yoke is light. And then there's the lightness. Sister Margaret kept stressing on this. You feel light. There's a lightness. There's a lightness. And, and, and that is it because you are not the one carrying anything. You've handed everything over to the Father. And he's working in you. He's working in you. So he is the one doing the work. You are but a vessel. You know, he's working in you, working in you, and on you. 
you know, even you that he's working on you, he's using, you know, he's working through you on you. I don't even know how to describe it, right? We are here with Christ in God. We just have to be available. And you do it all. And you know, when Sister Margaret said that, you know, we, those of us who have agreed to work with the Lord um, right here with us, those of us who are gathered here, and those who are believers and those who want to submit, that's why we are here. Or at least if you don't want to submit, you want to hear more about it. That's why you are here. We have a ready missed target. You know, and like the, the, the hymn I posted, we are on the Lord's side. So we'll all be, always be his target. But then the Lord is opening our eyes to be able to identify the wiles of the enemy, like the word of God says. So that when he's coming from afar, we know that this one is a missile from somewhere. So you forget it's crap. Let me give you an example as we wait for more sisters to share. Right now, as I was sharing, as I'm sharing now, 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 you know, my husband came in and I'm sending my CV somewhere for, for something. And the person called and said, oh, the, the link to, um, the person's supposed to look through a document that I'm attaching to my CV. And the person said, oh, the link that I sent, she wants it in a document form. So it makes it easier for her to do the comparison and then, you know, the double check for me. So my I, she was calling my phone. I, I wasn't picking up. Then my husband came in and said that, oh, the person called and said, you need to, I think at the time Sadali I was speaking here. Yeah. And he said, oh, you need to send it as a document. And I said, okay, thank you. I saw her calling. I'll do that. Then he said, oh, you need to do it now. You know, if informer before would have said, ah, but you seem that I'm leading a session. But when he said it, I didn't say anything because I knew that, Charlie. I was listening to my neighbor's conversation where the enemy was trying to throw some subtle darts me. How do I even know? It's the Holy Spirit. So I was quiet and then he went back to the room. So I, as I was listening to Sister Dahlia, I was asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, help me. You know, if Paul wants to say something and say, now Bobby and I are there, why can't you just help me? Did, 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 did. But that's not what you want to say. So help me. So he just said, go and ask. Ask from a place of love. Sweetheart, or whatever you call your husband, can you please help me pull out this document as a Word document or whatever and send it on my behalf, please? That's all. Meanwhile, the enemy was telling me to, to establish my rights, right? What rights? And to say something. So I just went over as um, Mama Augusta was speaking and I said, oh, Charlie, I beg, you know, I'm leading this program. I chop out small. Can you please extract this document and send it to this person for me? I've sent you the link. And then he looked at me and said, okay, that's it. This could have turned into an attitude problem some time back, you know. And I wouldn't understand it. But with the help of the Lord, he helps us to notice some of these silent darts that are coming. In these guns or this this missiles with silences, it will be not something very small, but that is exactly what you use to come in through your office. So we need to be mindful. We need to be mindful. My dear sisters, we are still sharing. We are still sharing. He's yes, yeah, the devil has lost completely. 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 Because me sitting here doing this amazing hosting. That I'm enjoying so much. That's me myself. I'm complimenting because I'm enjoying. <laughs> the enemy is coming to come and throw some missiles at me. Listening to all your testimonies and I'm being blessed. He too, he was planning for me. So this is the point I'm making with that is that um, like Sister Margaret shared, look, we are targets of the enemy. But the truth is, we are being given weapons to overcome because we have overcome. It's to walk in that overcome position. It's what the Lord is trying to help us do through platforms like these. So when he says we should do something, let us do it because he's only bringing us into the place of power. When he says be led by the spirit and not by the flesh, the Lord is only bringing you and I to the place of power. There's so much power available for us to walk in. So much. And he's bringing us to this place of power. So please let us Allow ourselves. Let me go through a few things that um okay, I have a question. So the sister is asking us, do you find that it's a struggle communicating on the phone 
when distance is at play in a marriage, do you find that it's a struggle communicating on the phone when distance is at play in marriage? So I'm assuming this distance means maybe when you're not in one place or one country or one town, and the communication has to be via phone. Dear sisters, please, if anybody has this kind of experience, please share and let us all learn. But from what I know and from what I have experienced, um, okay, my sister is asking for more explanation. This sister's question means that um, if maybe you are in Ghana and your husband is in the US, is it a struggle? She's asking if somebody else has struggled with communication when there's distance between you and your husband. Or maybe your husband can be in Kumasi, you are in Accra, or your husband is in D.C., and you are in Texas or whatever. And so there's distance, and the communication is via phone. Has anybody experienced struggle, and how have they dealt with it? Sister Rita, please go ahead. Hello, sisters. Good evening. Good evening, dear sis. Thanks for the opportunity to share. So um, I, I just want to share my personal experience on the distance um, issue. So when we got married, actually even before we started dating and all that, uh, we knew ourselves already, but we were not dating until so we started dating and we got married. Everything He was in the U.S., I was in Ghana. And um, the communication thing, you know, it's, it's very, very key and something we all look out for. So what did we do? I'm just sharing some few things we did that helped us. And I pray to help you too. So one, um, you have to be very, very, very intentional because assuming the person is outside Ghana, there may mm. be that differences in time. So the time that you will be active, he may be sleeping. And that, the time that he will be active, you also be tired doing your own thing. So you know, I'm tired, let me sleep. And if you don't become very intentional, you may not be able to make time for each other. So mm -hmm. you have to be very, very intentional about that. And it will take sacrifices. So both of you would have to understand, or even since we are the ladies here on our part, you have to be willing to make the sacrifice when it is necessary. And every little moment that you take, um, you get to talk, you make that time meaningful. I mean, that will not be the time that you'll be fighting about money or maybe you didn't send this money on the children's that and the children's that. I mean, mm -hmm. that is like make the time very, very meaningful for you so that at least you'll be encouraged. He knows that, oh, once I pick my phone and talk to my wife, I mean, it's going to mm -hmm. be a nice time, although I'm stressed. But once we talk, it may, it may not be um, um, a long time, but we will have, you know, that kind of thing. So practically, what we did was um, when I am going to work, when I was going to work, then he will be sleeping. So sometimes when we wake up, we'll be on the phone. So like um, maybe video call, voice call, your own preference. So you'll be on the phone. So at least you, you can see him sleeping. Sometimes you'll just be sleeping. You will not be talking. There's nothing to talk about. He's sleeping. But then he, he knows that he'll wake up and he'll still see you on the phone. It's as if you are there with him. Or when I'm sleeping, you'll be on the phone. Then I'll, I'll just sleep. And I know that I'll wake up and you'll still be on the phone. Sometimes I wake up and he's also asleep. Or you wake up and I'm asleep. But that, that atmosphere, that thing, that thing there, that oh. My wife is on the line or my husband is on the line. So you really, really have to be very intentional about creating the time. Then messages, maybe I'm just checking on you. Maybe the nature of your job will not allow you. Just checking on you, just messages here and there. The distance for us, um, the only thing was like like having the phone knowledge that he wasn't with me. But really, we, we didn't feel it that much because we were very, very intentional about that. So every little time that you get, even if there's nothing that you, you are going to talk about, oh, just want to be on phone with you. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, just watching them comment. Just, just try to create, be very intentional to create that. And if not, you will never, never be able to do it. If you are not very intentional about it and we are waiting for when we are all okay and in the mood to talk, you will never be able to, to do that. So the distance shouldn't, it shouldn't break that communication thing. 
you shouldn't. Be very intentional about it. And both of you could look at how you can manage your time or how you do your things and create that moment around your time. So that's what I just wanted to share from my own experience. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rita. God bless you. Please don't go away. The sister is asking. I'm sure she's wondering if she would, how she would manage something. But she's asking, how, how long was your distance, please? And how many years have you been married for? I'm sure she um, wants to see. Yeah. And she wants to see them. I'm, 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 I'm new in the system. Of yeah, yeah, this is, it's, it's fresh. Our area that you are enjoying, or what? <laughs> but the Lord is good. Fresh or not, we are enjoying. We are enjoying. So the distance was four years. Was yes. was four years, and um, yes. after marriage was, um, almost two years, one and a half years before mm. we were able to come together under one roof. So less about five to about six years. Yeah, yes. but yes, yeah, please. that was. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you, sis. God bless you. God bless you, sis. Yes. But at CWW, we are our, our, our prayer and with what the Lord is teaching us, our marriages will be as God wants it to be, irrespective of how long. Yes, we know there are challenges that come, but because of what we know, we are we are more than conquerors and, and we are going to do exactly as the Lord wants us to do with his help in our marriages um there's something that okay let me see if okay no i read that already okay she said that she asked if she was commenting and she said that sometimes you know um there can be quietness and the quietness be perceived as rude and also a passionate conversation may be seen as yelling but i believe what sister rita's experience is helpful so that if there's a video call i mean then the passion will be seen in your body language and also the quietness will be seen in your body language and so it will be a bit different if these are video calls let me throw in the scripture um sister dahlia let me i'll come to you right after this james 1 19 know this my beloved brothers let every person be quick to hear slow to speak slow to anger this is the bible telling us about communication and reminding us that when we are communicating with each other we must be able to listen and attentively listen and not be in a hurry to say something and i'm saying this from a place where i used to struggle i like to talk i i mean i know i have a calling to talk and and i like to talk my husband is very quiet, relatively. And I remember I used to struggle a lot when I would, um, when he would say something and I was quick to give my view or my opinion. But apparently all he wanted to do was for me to listen. And I didn't know that until he said to me, when I need your opinion, I will ask you. In my mind, if you're talking to me, I have to say something, wrong, you know, but that is, I got the memo wrong. So I don't know what says your peculiarities are, but I believe by the time all our sisters have shared, the Lord himself will help you to be able to identify the peculiarities and he will guide you as to how to overcome that. Sister Dahlia, please go ahead. Yes, please. Amen. God bless you, sister. Yes, and God you. bless Sister Rita even as she shared. I want to share something very quick. I know we are almost close. Um, I have my husband, he's traveled a lot. He's traveling a lot. <laughs> and um, I was always like when he's traveling, just keep sending him messages and keep like, where are you? Why you don't text me? It's very serious. It's just like, you don't text me. And I'm crying because he don't care about me. And I was like I said, he don't care about me. I thought that. And that is like made him more. He don't need to speak with me. He just like don't want to. Like, you just put pressure on me. I don't want to. Ooh. And um, as uh, as I walk with the Lord, I knew that is even captive, like the enemy put it on me. Like he is my hope. He is my everything. So I start, God start to change in me, to put me, submit to God more. So I starting to submit to God when he's travel, like just keep praying, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. And he helped me. And I start like, you know, be busy in the Lord. Like the Lord keep me busy in him. 
and I just submit to God and just be very, very um, respect to my husband when he's traveled. I just like every morning, like in the first time, even I have mentors and my mommy mentor, she says, like, just, just do your job, you know, like when God put mentor on, on us, even like we hear, we hear, like I need to hear even. And I just like, huh? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I need, yes, to just do my work, like taking care. Are you okay? Everything is fine in the morning. Good morning, honey. Everything is fine. Just get back to me when you can. And that's it. And just go to the Lord, read the Bible, pray, spend the time with the Lord. That is take me from captivity. Like, just keep, where are you? Keep, talk to me. No, 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 all that. After that, I realized, mm -hmm. I realized, sorry, it's that okay. is, he start to look after me. I, I didn't do that to let him look after me. I, I do that, submit to God, submitting to God. And he start to call me video. He start to desire to speak to me. He start to desire to speak to me so much. Even I was saying in my heart, Eh, now I need to pray by myself or eh, now I need to read the Bible <laughs> eh, I need to meeting go on that he's just like ah I need to I said eh, I need to stay Lord thank you thank you so so God changed everything and, but it took a period of time as all mommies and sisters says it mm -hmm. took a time like it took a time to teach me and then he is give me more than I more than I want even more than I even ask for. I just like my husband. Even he starts to he start to video picturing the places. He start even send me songs, saying like I really want to be with you in this time. I just like wow, Lord, this is too much. So that is what I need to share, sister. Just um, wait to the Lord. Be still, keep praying, and uh, keep uh, uh, put. Oh, give him distance, his distance, his space, his distance. He wanted when he is traveling, and God will bring him back to you. Like God will bring him back to you, but if we are pride, like the, remember, remind me in one friend that I always like to speak with her about that but the prideness is more with her so like no i need i don't need to do anything and i don't need to wait and he want to change he should be changed this is not happen this will be not happen because god want to change me first and then he will change my husband amen Thank you, sister. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister Dahlia. Indeed, the light attracts the light. Like the word of God says, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. If only you would allow the light to come and live inside of you and work inside of you, you will definitely attract the light. God bless you, sister Dahlia. So, sister, there's a few notes that I made. Um, as sisters shared, and I, I just wanted to share this at the end so that we don't think, oh, we only came to do this sharing, but we really are taking something home with us. Um, the first one I wrote down is that we should listen to the Holy Spirit. We should listen to the Holy Spirit. And if you don't know how to listen, please ask him. Say, dear Holy Spirit, today sisters are saying this is the Holy Spirit. I don't get it. Please help me to hear you. We should allow God to change us. Like all our sisters and mom, mommy, Augusta have shared, we should allow God to change us. And also, we should submit to our husbands. We should do as the word of God says. And we should change our confessions. We should change our confessions. We must pray, pray, pray without season. The fervent prayer of a righteous one, a righteous man, sorry, availeth much. And also we must pray in the spirit. And if you don't pray in the spirit, just ask the Lord to give to you. And he will, in perfect timing. We must also learn to rest. 
and we can also only rest, like our sister shared, we can rest when we heed to correction. If you don't heed to correction, you can't rest. How or what is the link between rest and heeding to correction? It is that heeding to correction is literally obeying God. And we can only rest when we obey him. and depend. That means we are depending on him. That is his rest. His rest is when we are obedient and dependent on him and aligned and all of that. That is his rest. And in all of these suggestions that our sisters have tried and tested to the glory of God, there is inside there our heart positioning. If we do any of these as lip service, as we say in GM, it won't work because the Lord knows my heart and he knows your heart. So all this is heart positioning. All this is heart positioning. Our hearts must be right. One of our sisters was saying that I did this from my heart. I submitted to him from my heart. His heart positioning as well. And the scriptures that I put along somewhere um, as we went along was James 1, 19, Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 29. So my dear sisters, it has been a blessed evening for me. I have enjoyed every single minute of your sharing and I've been blessed. And I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. So thank you so much. Thank you for, for staying and thank you for sharing and making this worth every single minute. There's no time spent in the presence of the Lord that is not worth it. Thank you so much. Let us pray, my dear sisters. Father, we are grateful for time spent in your presence. We are grateful for this sharing of how you heal our marriages. We are grateful that you've reminded us that it's important that our marriages heal because it's depicting the relationship between you and the church. And that is a healed relationship. So Father, you know that we are at different points in our journey. I pray that each one of my sisters who's here tonight and anybody who will listen later, Father, please meet us all at our points of need. Teach us, grow us, use us, work in us. Teach us to be submissive to you. Teach us to align. Teach us to obey. Teach us to be dependent on you, sweet Holy Spirit. Our teacher, our comforter, our help. We know you are dependent. And because of that, we want to say thank you for helping us. Thank you, Jehovah, who sees us, who goes ahead of us. We are so grateful for tonight. And we know that tonight will really go a long way to make that difference in our marriages. May your name be praised. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear sisters, please, let us unmute and share the grace so I can stop the recording and hand over to our beloved 1010 team. Shall we share the grace, please? And may the, grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love of God, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. And surely, and surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in love and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God oh bless you, my dear sisters. God, God bless, bless you so you. much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.